Today in the Our Ambassador series, we're joined by Australia's Ambassador to the Netherlands, Neil Mules. Good morning, Neil. It's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you. Neil, of course, there's a long historical connection between Australia and the Netherlands, but how does that resonate today? Yes, uh, well, many people don't realise that the Dutch were the first to uh, land in any numbers on Australian territory, and we celebrated back in 2006, 400 years since the first, first Dutch ship landed in Australia, the Doifken up in Cape York, um, in uh, 1620, 1616, Dirk Hartog, the Dutch navigator, landed on the coast of Western Australia, the first of many Dutch ships uh, that uh, reached the West Australian coast. So we'll have a big celebration also in the next few years for 400 years since, uh, since that happened. So there is this very rich tapestry of historical connection. Uh, the Dutch were obviously the first Europeans and as many uh, school children will know, uh, the western half of Australia was called New Holland for uh, for the first uh, few hundred years of uh, European contact. Since then, there's been a continuation of that. Uh, um, other Dutch navigators have left their mark, uh, names like Cape Leeuwen, Rottnest Island, and even uh, Tasmania and the Tasman Sea, of course, are named after Abel Tasman, the famous Dutch navigator. Um, that uh, contact uh, dropped off a, a little bit because the Dutch didn't stay and the British came to the other side of the country. But uh, following the Second World War, the waves of Dutch migration that came to Australia, I suppose, was the next big Dutch contact, Dutch impact in Australia. We had hundreds of thousands of Dutch people arrive in Australia and uh, they've made an extraordinary contribution to our country. So there is this backdrop of historical connection and, uh, and friendship between us. And so then looking beyond the historical relationship, how would you characterise the contemporary relationship between Australia and the Netherlands? Well, sort of laid over that historical backdrop, we have a situation today in which the Netherlands and Australia basically share a global outlook. We have very uh, similar values and the way we see the world is very similar. So we've been able to build an extraordinarily strong bilateral relationship on that historical foundation. Most recently we saw that in evidence where Australia and the Netherlands worked together in Afghanistan. Our two uh, militaries uh, worked together to provide security in Oruzgan province. As a result of that, the Dutch military has the highest regard for Australia and the Australian military. But more broadly, this uh, connection we have enables us to talk to the Dutch, compare notes and share approaches across a whole range of international issues, whether it's very sensitive, high profile foreign policy matters like um, counter-terrorism, for example, UN uh, reform. The Dutch are prominent members of the EU, so it's very good to have a, a close friend in the councils of the EU. Um, but also uh, in, uh, in lighter areas, in, in cultural relations, for example. The great Dutch orchestra, the Concertgebouw, as part of its 125th anniversary celebrations, will visit Australia this year for the first time. And uh, apart from musicians, I, I guess, I think that the most recent stats we have are from 2011, where 160,000 Dutch visited Australia, whether they're backpackers or businessmen, uh, um, they stay longer than most visitors and they learn a lot about Australia. The Dutch know and like Australia very much. Uh, I think the Dutch know more about contemporary uh, Aboriginal art, for example, than anybody else in Europe and, and perhaps more than, than many Australians. So we have a, a very solid bilateral relationship at every level. Of course, Australians are already quite familiar with a number of Dutch companies through their interaction and investments in Australia. Can you tell us a little bit about the commercial and investment relationship between the two countries? Absolutely, and of course, the economic relationship is always one of the major pillars of any serious bilateral relationship. The Netherlands is, a, is an important economic power in the world. If you just took the world's biggest economies, it would come in in the top 20 somewhere. And so it's very important for us to, uh, to work together with the Dutch on broad economic matters. At a bilateral level, we have a healthy trading relationship, about um, $5 billion a year. It, it suffered a little bit from the global financial crisis, but has bounced back. 
but the, the highlight story on, uh, on economic relations between our countries is in the area of investment. The Netherlands is the fourth biggest foreign direct investor in Australia. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, there are household names that we all know, Shell, Philips, which are big investors in Australia. Other big investors, the financial institutions, ING, the Rabobank. So almost all of the important global players in the Dutch economy are present in Australia and uh, we take full advantage of that. Uh, in the other direction, Australians are investing more and more in the Netherlands as well. And I think it's now about the, uh, about the ninth biggest uh, destination for Australian uh, foreign direct investment. So across the board on the economic front, things are healthy with potential for, for being even uh, greater in the future. And of course, The Hague is probably best known to most Australians as an international legal centre. Can you tell us about how important that is and a little bit about your role there? Absolutely, and as I, I've been talking about the bilateral relationship, but the truth is that probably more than half my time as ambassador in the Netherlands is spent on the international organisations based in the Netherlands. Um, that starts with the uh, Organisation for the Prevention of Chemical Weapons, which is the international body that oversees the implementation of the Chemical Weapons Convention. Australia was uh, very important in the foundation of that organisation. We remain very active in it. Um, Australians, uh, by and large, don't know very much about this uh, these days, but it's important to uh, it's important to recognise the importance of the OPCW. The Chemical Weapons uh, Convention is the only international disarmament uh, agreement which has all but achieved the elimination of an entire category of weapons of mass destruction, chemical weapons. So very important we stay engaged with them. You mentioned the courts, which is the other big international feature of the job, and, uh, and uh, they range from the uh, country-specific uh, tribunals, such as the Yugoslavia and Lebanon Tribunal, We've been very active in the Yugoslav Tribunal historically and as it winds up we will continue to be. Um, but also uh, that includes the International Criminal Court. This is a, a, a very interesting and challenging development in the, in the world's international legal system. For the first time we have established an organisation which uh, has as its aim a global coverage of, of the world and an ability to bring to justice the perpetrators of uh, war crimes and uh, crimes against humanity. Australia is very active in that organisation. We're working very hard towards helping improve the governance of that court as it enters its only second decade in existence. I suppose the court that most people would be familiar with in The Hague is the International Court of Justice which is the uh, UN body which, um, uh, which looks at disputes between states. Australia, again, has had quite a lot to do with the ICJ over its history and most people will know that we currently have a case in the ICJ, that's our case against Japan on uh, whaling in the Southern Ocean. Uh, that's going to keep the embassy extremely busy during the course of this year. The um, oral hearings in the court should happen in the middle of the year. And so we're in very close touch with the court on an almost daily basis in preparations for that. And that'll keep me and my colleagues busy. So you see, there's more than enough for us to do in the international organisations in The Hague. Thanks very much, Neil. It's been great. Thank you. And that was Neil Mules, Australia's ambassador to the Netherlands.